religions, the majority of the religions, if you read the scriptures, they say that you should not kill innocent human beings. And the leader of all these religions is Islam. Islam says, it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, the ayat, the verse which was recited by the Qari, it says that if anyone, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, kills any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. I know of many religious scriptures which say that you should not kill innocent human beings. But Quran does not only say that, it says that if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or for creating corruption or for spreading mischief in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. Quran goes a step further and says that if you kill any innocent human being, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. I don't know of any religious scripture which says that if you kill any innocent human being, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. And further Quran goes on to say that if you save any single life, any single human being, it is as though you have saved the whole of humankind. Islam is derived from the Arabic word salam or salam, which means peace. It comes from the Arabic word film, which means to submit your will to Almighty God. Islam in short means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God. Islam condemns all forms of terrorism, all forms of acts which kill innocent human beings. Irrespective whether it's 9-11, whether Twin Tower attack, or the 7th of July, where more than 50 Innocent people were killed in London bomb blast. The New York Towers, more than 3,000 people were killed in the London bomb blast. More than 50 were killed. Or whether it be the serial bomb blast in 93 of Bombay, where more than 250 people were killed. Or the bomb blast that took place recently, on the 11th of July, 2006, where more than 200 people were killed, are to be condemned. It is prohibited. You cannot justify killing of any innocent human being. Many Muslims, many a times, to appease the government, they put a full stop there. I never put a full stop here. I continue and say, we also have to condemn the thousands of Afghanis that have been killed in Afghanistan, the thousands of innocent people that have been killed in Iraq, the thousands of people that are killed in Gujarat, the thousands of people killed in Palestine, thousands of people killed in Lebanon. We can't put a full stop. Who are you afraid of? All sorts of terrorism in which innocent human beings are killed have to be condemned, whether done by Muslims or non-Muslims. We don't have records that 9-11 or 7 July or the recent serial bomb blast in the train confirmed records done by Muslims. It is just a hypothesis. But irrespective, after we come to know the truth, whether it's done by Muslim or non-Muslim, it is to be condemned. It is prohibited. We know that most of the religions, they don't preach that you should kill innocent human beings. Terrorism is not the monopoly of any religion. It is not. But when we analyze, we have terrorists that claim to profess certain religions. And when we analyze, they are from all types of religions. We have Christian terrorists, we have Catholic terrorists, we have Jewish terrorists, we have Hindu terrorists, we have Muslim terrorists, we have Buddhist terrorists, we have Sikh terrorists. Terrorists professing very different faiths. But most of the religions, they condemn the killing of innocent human beings. And when we do a survey, that though we know that religions don't encourage killing innocent human beings, when we do a survey and try and find out that the people that have killed the maximum innocent human beings, which religion do you profess? Number one, the human being that has killed the maximum innocent human beings. Who is he? Who is he? Hitler. He has insinuated six million Jews. And indirectly, if you count all the people killed in the World War II, 60 million people. Number one, was he a Muslim? He was a Christian. Joseph Stalin, called as Uncle Joe, he has estimated to have killed 20 million human beings. He has starved 14.5 million human beings to death. When we go to China, Mao Zedong, he has killed 14 to 20 million human beings. He was a non-Muslim. He was not a Muslim. We know from record that Mussolini, in Italy alone, has killed 400,000 human beings, innocent human beings. 
The person after whom the French Revolution is named, Maximilien Robespierre, he has starved and tortured to death more than 200,000 people and executed more than 40,000 people. Ashoka, you know, in one battle alone, in Kalinga battle, he has killed 100,000 people. More than 100,000 people. Was he a Muslim? He was a Hindu. We have our own black sheep also. Rakosh Tala, the Saddam Hussein, is responsible for the death of a few hundred thousand people. But the embargo put by George Bush on Iraq alone has killed half a million children in Iraq alone. Half a million. In one shot, only on the embargo put by USA, UN, on Iraq, half a million children have died. In Indonesia, Mohammed Sato, even he has claimed to have killed 500,000 people, but if nothing compared to Hitler, nothing compared to Uncle Joe, Joseph Stalin, nothing compared to Mao Sousing of China. Each individual will put all the Muslims together to shame. I'm not trying to say that the followers of this religion, they were practicing the religion, they were not religious. Otherwise, they wouldn't have ever killed innocent human beings. But yet we find in the international media, we find that Muslims are being targeted. Muslims are called as fundamentalists, as extremists. They're called as terrorists. What is the meaning of the word fundamentalist? Fundamentalist, by definition, means a person who follows the fundamentals of one particular subject. For example, if a person wants to be a good scientist, he should know, follow, and practice the fundamentals of science. Unless he's a fundamentalist in the field of science, he can't be a good scientist. For a person to be a good mathematician, he should know, follow, and practice the fundamentals of maths. Unless he's a fundamentalist in the field of maths, he can't be a good mathematician. You can't paint all fundamentals the same brush, that all are good or all are bad. Depending in which field the person is a fundamentalist, you have to label him accordingly. If you have a fundamentalist robber whose profession is to rob, he's bad for the society. On the other hand, if you have a fundamentalist doctor who saves thousands of human beings, he's good for the society. So depending in which field the person is a fundamentalist, you have to label him accordingly. As far as I'm concerned, I am a fundamentalist Muslim, and I am proud to be a fundamentalist Muslim. Because I know, I follow, and I strive to practice the fundamentals of Islam. And I know that there is not a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. There may be, there may be a few fundamentals of Islam, which the non-Muslim may feel is against humanity. But the moment you give the logical reason, the background for these fundamentals, there is not a single unbiased human being who can point out a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. <laughs> this word fundamentalism, we come to know from Webster Dictionary, that it was first coined to describe a group of Christians in the early part of the 20th century in America who protested against the church. They were called as Protestant Christians. Initially, the church, they believed that the message of the Bible is from God. These Protestant Christians, they protested and said, not only is the message of the Bible from God, every word, every letter of the Bible is from God. If someone can prove that every word, every letter of the Bible is from God, this movement is a good movement. On the other hand, if someone can prove that every word of the Bible is not from Almighty God, then this movement is not a good movement. When we refer to the Oxford Dictionary for the definition of the word fundamentalist, it says that fundamentalist is a person who strictly adheres to the ancient teachings and doctrines of any religion. But when we refer to the revised new edition, there's a slight change. The new edition says, that fundamentalist is a person who strictly adheres to the ancient teachings and doctrines of any religion, especially Islam.